Alrighty, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about our very, 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 very simple sort of component architecture, I suppose you could say. So we're gonna have a handful of top level components. So what do I what do I mean by component? Well, I pretty much mean the same sort of thing that I would mean if I were referring to a React component or an Angular 2 component. Remember, we're not using any specific framework, but we are expressing our architecture in the modern way that most frameworks will expect you to express your architecture. So what you're looking at right now is the way I'm laying out all of the components. So for example, we have our user list component and our player components. And those are just going to be windows that show you the current player or the current user list. And they're gonna be very simple and straightforward. Other components are gonna be a little bit more complicated and they're gonna have sub components. So in this example, we have chat, which is its own master main component, top level component is how I'm gonna to refer to it as. And then inside of it, it has two sub components, a list and a form. And on the playlist, we have even more components. We have the playlist component, which is the root level component. We have a Chrome component, which is going to be responsible for dealing with the, uh, the, the now playing indicator on the scroll bar, as well as the title of the playlist window. And then inside of the playlist component, we have the toolbar component and the context menu component for handling the toolbar for adding items and the context menu for removing items as well as the items component, which is gonna be the list of all of the items in the playlist. And the items component is gonna also have another component of called sort, which is gonna be responsible for the drag dropping sorting operation that we're gonna be able to allow users to do to reorder items in the playlist. So as you see, you see the hierarchy of components. And we need to build a very, very thin sort of base class for these components because I want to standardize how, standardize how they're, they're added to the DOM and how they're removed from the DOM. Because the top level components, I want to be hot reloadable. So I'm going to show you guys how the actual, you can take a component, you can write it, and you can have it automatically update when you change the code on your in your source and have it automatically be reattached to where it's supposed to be. So basically, our, our simple component system is very straightforward. It's a base class that can be mounted to a element on the page, and that's it. And a component can be attached or detached. And yeah, I mean, that's it's a very straightforward concept. So each one of these components, each one of these boxes is going to be its own component. So let's go ahead and just, I'm going to write out the the component base class for you guys so all of the component classes even the child component classes are going to inherit from this so yeah let's go let's go and head and get started and client i'm going to create a new folder called lib that's not how you spell lib and i'm going to create a new file called not surprisingly component js and i'm going to go ahead and export a class called component base um we will be importing jQuery here in a moment, but for now, let's just look at the basic structure of our component base. What, what constitutes a component? Well, I said it can be attached to a mount point. And it can also be detached. Also, things that inherit from the component base are going to have events called onAttach and onDetached. So that child components, or not child components, but components that inherit from this component base can get notified when they're attached and detached. Well, the behavior of this is super simple. So let's go ahead and get started. When we attach, all we do is we say this mount equals mount. Now, of course, I prefix, uh, I prefix variables that are intended to be jQuery objects with money. And we're going to do something kind of weird here. We're going to do this underscore on detach equals array. We're going to do this dot children without an underscore equals array. And then we're going to invoke this on attach. Okay, so we are setting our mount. We are doing our on attach. Our, we're creating an array of children or our on detach rather is an array of, of, of functions as we'll see in a moment. And then we invoke the on attach method. So when we attach a component, we get notified on the child class that we've been attached and we now need to manipulate the DOM in some sort of way. Now, the children and the on detach will become very apparent what they do 
when I write the detach method. Uh, um, for the detach method, the first thing we do is we notify the subclasses that we have been detached. So we, we invoke this on detach method. Uh, if you're familiar with um, uh, statically typed object oriented languages, you could consider on attach and on detach as protected void methods. Then I'm going to say for let handler of this on detach handler. Then I'm going to say for let child of this children child detach. And then finally, this on detach equals empty array. This children equals empty array. And that is our component base. So what does on detach do? Well, on detach is a list of event handlers that will be called when this component is, uh, is detached. We're going to use this when we subscribe to reactive ext uh, uh, reactive extensions observables. We're going to use the on detach callback to say when we detach this component, go ahead and unsubscribe to whatever you've subscribed to, whatever observable sequences you've subscribed to, or really anything else. If you want to add a little bit of code to be invoked when we perform an on detach, well, then you add it to this array. Oh, well, that's going to be a problem because our on detach will conflict with that name. Let's call this um, on detach handlers. That's a better name. Of course I can rename that. I'll just have to do it manually. On detach handlers and make sure to do change that there and that there. I um, kind of messed up my names there. But make sure that you don't have any conflicts with names. This, unfortunately, is not a statically typed language. It will, you know, tell you when you mess that up. All right, so currently the, com the basic component base doesn't really have any concept other than being attached with a mount. It doesn't actually manipulate the DOM in any sort of way. I want to write a subclass of component base that will make creating components that have a root element of a particular type super easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import money from jQuery. I wish it was that easy. So import money from jQuery. And we're going to write a subclass of component base for components that are wrapped in an element. So this subclass is just going to be a helper for other, um, other components. So I'm going to say export class element component extends component base. Now an element component is going to have a couple interesting things. First of all, it's going to have a getter. Get element return this money element, which we haven't created element yet. Then I'm going to create a constructor with element type equals div, which will invoke the super constructor first, and then say this element equals money, and then in a template string, element type dot data component this. All right, I'll explain this all in a second because we only have a couple more methods to write, and they're all pretty straightforward. Attach mount will first invoke super, or sorry, um, super dot attach mount. So the base mount method, which is this attach method right there. And then it'll say this element dot append to this mount. For our detach, we'll invoke our super detach. And then we'll say this element dot remove. And then finally, I'm going to put a helper method in here for setting classes on element components called set class, class name is on. I'll say if is on, then this element add class, class name. Otherwise, this element remove class. So what is element component? Well, it's simply a component that represents an element in our DOM. So we just use this as a, as, a, as a handy little thing for creating components that are divs or ULs or some sort of container, or maybe not a container, maybe individual LIs. And it does a couple useful things. It creates the element for us with whatever element type we specified, defaulting to div if we don't specify an element type. And then it attaches our component instance to that new element. And then when we mount with the attach method, we first call the super at at attach, which is going to do all the other stuff in the base class. And then we mount or we attach our element to our mounts node. And then when we detach, we do the same thing. We call the super detach, and then we remove our element completely from the DOM. And then we have a, a helper class or helper function for setting the class on our element object. 
And that's it. So I'll go ahead and scroll through this. This is our component framework. Um, not super complicated. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it makes our, us writing our components really um, uh, standard. So let's go ahead and stub out our components. We can do that already. Um, for example, uh, all we have to do here is create our any all the things that are outlined with a box and just stub them out. So we have our player, our user list, our chat, our chat list, our chat form, our playlist, our playlist Chrome, our playlist toolbar, our playlist context menu, the items and sort. So we just need to stub all these out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a nice little roadmap of what to write. Let's start with the user list and the player. Let's do those two first. Those are really easy. So up here in client, I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new folder called components. Inside of components, I'm going to create a new folder called player. Inside of player, I'm going to create a new class called player.js. And player.js is going to, right now, he's just going to import element component from back one directory, back two directories, which will back one directory into components, back two directories into client, forward slash lib, forward slash component. And then we're going to say, um, class, I'm not exporting this. I'm not exporting this for a reason. We'll see why soon. Player component extends element component. And then we'll have a constructor that simply calls super. And then we'll have a, um, we can do an onAttach here. And onAttach is simply, or underscore onAttach rather, is that's going to go ahead and say title equals this, um, mount find h1 dot text player or we we can break out the text here we, then we can say title dot text player so this finds the h1 in the mount node and then it sets it to player um let's go ahead and attach it so to attach this component the way what we're going to do is i'm going to say const or let component equals new player component and then i'm going to say component attach money, which we, we don't have, or we, we will have jQuery here in a second, money uh, section dot player. And let's be sure to import jQuery at the top. So import money from jQuery. And this is basically how we're going to write most of our components. We're going to create the component class with the onAttach method, and the onAttach method is going to do all the DOM manipulation. Then we're going to instantiate it, and then we're going to attach it. So let's do... Let's do something fun. Let's see how we can do hot live uh, hot module reloading with this. So if I come over here and I open up my browser, refresh this, hit control or hit F5. Uh, we need to actually first of all have this running. So gulp dev, and while that starts up, we need to make sure that we import the player component inside of our application.js. So while that's booting up, let's go into application.js, and then on this component section, I'm simply going to say require components player player and then i'm going to refresh that and now check that out our player is mounted in fact we can come in here to the player js we could do something a little bit more interesting we can say um this element append um h1 hey and then we come over here and we refresh and we now have that hey added there. So see how the player is attached to the section dot player, which we, what we did right there. And we just did that using the basic attach method of our element component. Let's go ahead and enable live reloading of this component. So we can write our code here in JavaScript and every time we hit control S, the component will automatically update in our browser without us having to refresh. So unfortunately the code for this is gonna be a little weird. Um, but it's the code that we're going to have to deal with when working with Webpack's hot module replacement, unless we wanted to write a custom plugin to Webpack. And writing a custom plugin for Webpack is a little out of scope for this series. So we're going to do it as simple as possible. I'm going to say let component, um, I'm going to start off by saying let component. I'll explain all this code in a second. Let component. I'm going to grab uh, that out and put component equals new um, playlist component. And then I'm going to attach it. And remember, this is all in a try block. I'm going to catch E, and I'm going to console error E on that. And then I'm going to say if component, then component.detach. 
And then I'm going to say, finally, if module hot, module hot accept, module hot dispose, component and component detach. All right, let's make sure this works first. I'm going to come over here and refresh. And then I'm going to change this text to hey123, hit control S, and check that out. We have hot reloading JavaScript. So I can come in here and just do whatever I want in that H1, and it just magically updates. So what's going on here? Well, we go ahead, we try to instantiate the player component, and we try to attach it. If it fails and we have a reference to the component, we preemptively detach it to make sure that it's not there anymore. So if there was an exception in the attach method and something blew up, we make sure to detach it because, well, the attach method is broken. Uh, make sure to get rid of that element. And then finally, whether or not it failed, we check to see if hot reloading is enabled. If it does, we accept ourselves. Remember, module hot accept says, hey, I know how to hot reload. But then we also add a dispose handler. We tell the hot reloader, hey, if if this module gets replaced, before before you replace me, go ahead and perform this action. And what's this action? Well, this action is disposing of the old component. If we didn't do this disposing of the old component, then the the player component would be attached multiple times. But with this, by just coming in here and hitting control S, I'll, I'll tell you what happens. Webpack compiles it. Webpack tells HMR, hot module replacement, that a new module is available. HMR checks to see if this module that was replaced accepts hot reloading, which it does because of this line right here. HMR then invokes the dispose handler of this module. HMR then gets rid of this whole mod, the whole old module, completely removes it from memory, and then HMR loads back in this module. And that is how we can write components that can be hot reloaded. Now, it's very, very important that if you do this, you are aware of the rules you have to follow. And that is only manipulate the DOM of the uh, either the mount node or the element that's created by the element component, because that's the thing that'll be attached and detached. If you start manipulating other bits of the DOM, from this component, then you're going to have a bad time because those changes aren't going to go away when the module is disposed. But you know what? That is a good thing to, to not do. That is a good requirement it's enforcing on us. Our components should be self-contained. They should only care about themselves and their child components. And that is it. They shouldn't care about anything else. So while, yes, that's a limitation, and while, yes, we have to be careful, I find it as a good thing because it'll force us to make our components self-contained like how components should be. It doesn't matter if you're writing React or in Angular or any framework or no framework at all. That is just how you should write your components. And it makes your software significantly easier to maintain and significantly easier to reason about. So I'm not concerned about that limitation. I don't even call it a limitation. I call it just like ESLint forces me to write good uh, semantic JavaScript, this will force us to write self-contained components. A couple other things to note, HMR is, it is a has a really funky interface to it. And we do have to call this module hot accept. It is possible to module hot accept for child dependencies, but it's it gets really, really complicated with the way it handles it. There, there would be a way for me to write some code in our application.js file that would hot replace all of our modules without us having to add this code at the bottom of each top level module. But I am not gonna do that because it's gonna require a, a lengthy discussion on Webpack internals. It is possible and I would not be surprised to see more hot module reloading plugins for Webpack coming out in the near future. There already is one for React and I believe there's one for Angular. But if you're ever curious about how those plugins actually work behind the scenes, well, you're looking at it. Super, super powerful stuff. Anyway, in the next video, we're going to continue on stubbing out all of our components. So we have this nice roadmap of the things we have to implement in this application. So we'll see you guys then.